Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about which car is the better one to buy, the new WRX or the new STI. And my unpopular opinion that I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of uh, feedback from is that honestly I think for the majority of cases, and I'll get into exceptions later on in the video, that the WRX is the better car. And just hear me out before you think I'm crazy. Uh, I own a 2014 STI. I'm right now in the new 2015 Subaru WRX. STI, but I've driven the new WRX and I truly do believe in the majority of cases that it's the better car. So here's why. First of all, and this is something that's always differentiated the WRX and the STI, is that the WRX is significantly lighter, about 100 to 200 pounds depending on the trim, and that of course comes from uh, lacking in some of the sophisticated technology that the WRX STI has, where it's got beefier, more sophisticated differentials, uh, beefier transmission, it's got larger brakes. Uh, so there are definitely things that add weight to the STI that are performance oriented and make sense. That said, regardless, the Deborah X does weigh less. Now, the biggest difference between the two cars is the engine. The WRX has a brand new FA20 engine, uh, which has a twin scroll turbocharger. Uh, it's fantastic, it's super efficient, and the STI has a pretty dated 2.5 liter, which has been around since 2008, and basically since 2004 in the US, it's got a slight power bump. 305 horsepower, 290 pound-feet of torque, versus the WRX, where you've got 268 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. Now, horsepower alone doesn't tell the story because you don't see the graph. A peak number doesn't really mean all that much. And that's where the WRX shines. Where the STI's peak torque doesn't come on until 4,000 RPM, the WRX is doing it in half of that, and it's reaching peak torque at 2,000 RPM. What that means is that you're getting boost sooner, you've got less turbo lag, and you've got more torque earlier on. And so that makes it fun in city environments where you want low end torque, you want to be able to get into the boost very quickly at low RPM versus where you're on a track and you're keeping it in the high RPMs and you're maintaining boost, which the STI will do very well. But for city driving in the WRX, you're gonna be able to get into that power much sooner and you're gonna feel it. I mean, when you put your foot down in both of these cars at a low RPM, you're going to have a significant delay versus the WRX if you're driving the STI. The WRX will get into that boost much quicker and at much lower RPMs, and you'll get set back in your seat faster. And they actually do have, according to Car and Driver in their tests, they've got the exact same 0 to 60, uh, both the new WRX and the new STI. And that comes from a couple reasons. First of all, the WRX is lighter, as I mentioned. Second of all, it reaches boost earlier. And so that's a big help. Its torque band is better overall, where you reach higher torques earlier on than the STI is reaching at those RPM levels. And then finally, the gearing. So the STI is actually geared better for accelerating. Uh, it's geared a little bit more aggressively, but that means an extra gear shift to get to 60, whereas you won't have to do that in the WRX. You can reach 60 in second gear. So that's kind of a little bit misleading because you know if it was geared more aggressively, then it would be quicker to accelerate. Uh, but because it reaches 60, 60, uh, within that gearing, you've got two shifts within the STI, which you have to go through, so you have that time delay, which is associated with the gear shifts. And because it's a manual, you know, it's actually a decent amount of time. Okay, moving on, I did mention that the engine is more efficient, and so perhaps you don't care about fuel economy, perhaps you have enough money where that's not a concern to you, and perhaps, you know, the environmental consequences don't matter to you, and perhaps, you know, the fact that a car that's more efficient is going to be getting more power down to the ground, uh, maybe through its drivetrain, you know, less losses, maybe that doesn't matter to you. Um, but, you know, one thing that I think is kind of important is the fact that your range is reduced with the STI. Both the WRX and the STI have the same size gas tank, 15.9 gallons. And the difference is the WRX has a highway rating of 28, and I've been able to achieve 35 in it, and the STI has a rating of 23, uh, and I've been able to achieve around 26 in it. What this means is that the new STI of all the cars I've ever tested has the shortest range of any of the vehicles. So that means you're going to the gas tank more often. It's about 350 miles uh, if you're purely on the highway, just cruising at a good, you know, 60 to 70 miles per hour. 
versus in the WRX, you've got an additional 80 to 100 miles or so in there that you can keep going. And so I think that plays a big role because it's kind of just convenient to have a larger tank or a tank that gets you further distances, especially just because they're the same and yet this has significantly worse fuel economy. And so it's very apparent, you know, when you're driving, you watch the needle move every time you go for a drive. And this even has one less gallon than the previous generation STI. Okay, so now I've seemingly bashed the STI uh, over the WRX and I don't want to make it seem like this isn't a great car because honestly it's phenomenal. It's got a lot of sophisticated technology that the WRX doesn't have, limited slip differentials front and rear, a driver controlled center differential, it's got a stiffer chassis and stiffer springs and shocks, it has better brakes and it has wider tires. So it is a better handling vehicle without a doubt. Is it $8,000 worth better? Uh, I don't necessarily think so and the biggest thing I think is that because you can get into peak torque so much earlier on in the WRX than in the STI and you have reduced turbo lag, it just makes sense for more people because in most daily driving situations, you're going to want good torque on the low end. Now that said, if you plan on taking your vehicle to the track, I think the STI is the clear choice. Uh, unless you're just going on a very rare basis, but if you definitely know you're going to be taking your vehicle to the track, the STI is definitely the clear choice for all of the reasons I mentioned. Performance-wise, it's just going to handle significantly better. Also, I think if you're planning to tune the vehicle, this one makes more sense. It's got a larger engine with a significantly lower compression ratio, and so you can add safely a good amount more boost before running into problems, whereas the WRX is already running pretty high boost levels and it has a pretty high compression ratio, so you're going to have to have some significant changes there without running into knock. So if you fall into the category where you'd like to take your vehicle to the track or you'd like to significantly modify your vehicle, I think the STI is the better base to start with as it's just really going to perform and outshine against that WRX on a track and when it comes to tuning. That said, the majority of people probably aren't going to be doing that and if you just want a really fun street car, the WRX does that. It's just as quick, uh, stock maps, it's lighter, and honestly the steering actually feels really good in the WRX as well. It's got a slightly wider steering ratio, not quite as narrow as the STI, but it still feels really good and it still has really good grip levels thanks to all-wheel drive. It doesn't have the limited slip differentials up front and in the back, but in most situations you're not going to be in scenarios where you're going to be slipping with all-wheel drive. That's more common if you're going to be traveling off-road or in snow where you're going to start to run into problems with wheel slip, but even still with with all-wheel drive, in most scenarios, you're going to be fine. It's really going to come down to two-wheel drive vehicles where you're going to notice a huge difference with limited slip differentials. And, of course, on the track uh, where you want the most torque going to the wheel with the most grip. Now, I think the biggest difference from a driving perspective on public roads is that the WRX experiences a decent amount of rev hang where the STI does not. So shifting in the STI is going to be quicker and smoother because the throttle drops faster when you press in the clutch. In the WRX, it hangs for a little bit and you've got to wait for it to drop if you want a smooth engagement. Otherwise, you can shift quickly, it's just not going to be as smooth. So that's a definite advantage that the STI has over the WRX when it comes to shifting gears. So those are my thoughts. For the majority of people, the WRX is the car for you. It's going to save you money, it's lighter, and it reaches peak torques faster, and it's just as quick as the STI. If you're more performance oriented, you want to get out there on the track and thrash it for a bit, the STI is definitely the car for you. It's just set up for that environment so well. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.